a very important video this is a very different video uh, and this is a very important day for the backcountry diggers you may remember a few months ago the backcountry diggers got to hunt a fort site Fort Lindley a very significant location uh, in Lawrence County South Carolina historically Revolutionary War this foresight was discovered by a man with a metal detector, Roy Christie. And we were invited to come back out this year and see if we can find anything more in that foresight and everything we found went to the museum. Well, some time ago, the historians and the museum asked if we would be willing to come to the museum and have a presentation to lay all the artifacts out that we found and uh, we will be there for the for the people who meet us for the first time and, and see the artifacts and we were honored and we graciously accepted well today is that day I don't know what to expect um, I do know that this is a milestone milestone for our group and uh, and this should be very interesting so uh, I hope you enjoy here we go well I'm here and Bill is here we just got here but we're not sure where the museum is I'll be honest I've never been to this museum before now well yeah, even now I'm not there <laughs> So, uh, we're looking for this location. It's somewhere in the square. We're at the location right now. Uh, right down that table, that's uh, some of the stuff we found, and Roy Christie found some stuff over there, too. He's going to be here. Uh, this building looks like it's been under construction. For, they're probably looking at we got We got a drain right here. We're going to have a pretty good turnout here. We should have some fun. Don't know what to expect just yet. Please don't forget to sign in. Okay. Well, I uh, appreciate everybody being here. Um, tonight, you know, kind of a show and tell session. That's the way I want to look at it. And you're not going to always be sitting in those seats right there because I want you to come up when we start looking at these artifacts that we found in Fort Lindley. Um, so you can closely examine it. I'll also say too that part of our um, purpose in being here tonight is identification of these artifacts. I mean, I'm no expert in um, antiquities from 250 years ago by any means. And uh, we have several people who have uh, around here who have quite a bit of um, knowledge about what we're going to be looking at. But, you know, feel free if you've got a different interpretation that you see that, you know, from what you might be hearing. But I would like to say, you know, I'm Duran Ashmore, and one of my big hobbies is turning into more than a hobby, actually, but uh, battlefield preservation. And through the process of battlefield preservation, I've learned the stories of these different sites, and these sites are fascinating. The fact that they're in Lawrence County is uh, extremely fascinating, um, and because Lawrence County, you know, should be proud of the rich heritage that is that is here. And you spoke about the um, uh, Army unit from Lawrence County that you know fought together, uh, and I'm interested in learning much more about that as well. But I will say this: with the uh, 17 different historic sites in Lawrence County, which are very um, distinguished, the role that the men from Lawrence County played in the Revolutionary War is outstanding. The Little River Regiment, which was the militia here from 
modern day Lawrence County, fought in 49 different engagements, and these engagements were some of the most significant engagements in the Revolutionary War. They never lost, unless you count Bloody Bill Cunningham. But um, they never lost. Cowpens, Kings Mountain, Musgrove Mill, First and Second Siege of 96, the, little, the Cherokee War of 1776, the Little River Regiment was up front and center in all of these battles. They were very successful, and that's a proud heritage that uh, Lawrence County should be uh, very proud of. Now, probably everybody here knows about Fort Lindley and the history of Fort Lindley, but maybe there's one or two that don't know the history of Fort Lindley, and I'll go into this briefly. Um, July the 15th of 1776, 11 days after the Declaration of Independence was signed, there was a attack on the local militia here by uh, accounts vary. We've got two eyewitness accounts of what happened at Fort Lindley. One account says 300 Cherokees and 300 Tories dressed as Cherokees left from Richard Parrish's plantation and uh, the falls of the Reedy River in downtown Greenville and marched down to Fort Lindley, surrounded that fort at midnight. Defending the fort was 150 of the Little River, um, Little River Regiment, commanded by um, Major Jonathan Downs. Fortunately, um, 300 men were passing through from the Dutch, Dutch Fork area to 96. They were going to stay overnight at Fort Lindley so fortunately, Fort Lindley had 300 reinforcements right there. So, um, you know, that, uh, that was good. And there were about 600 people on either side, according to one eyewitness account. The other white eyewitness account says 245 um, were the Cherokees and the Tories that were attacking uh, Fort Lindley. If y'all have a seat. So, um, at midnight, with the Cherokees and Tories surrounding the fort, shots were fired. Uh, the defenders were firing um, at the attacking Cherokees and the Cherokees and so forth. For two hours, there was a brisk gunfire that uh, um, erupted until finally the defenders of the fort had enough and they charged at the front gates, 10 abreast, firing as they went, and the attack was, was uh, broken. Um, there were no bodies found, but plenty of blood, is how the quote goes. And the next morning, the um, defenders of Fort Lindley formed a skirmish line a half mile wide and marched out from that fort looking for survivors uh, or any Indians that were out there. And after they went three miles, they came to a clearing where there were 30 horses in the, in the clearing with uh, saddles, saddlebags, and uh, parched corn. And when they went through the saddlebags, they found the commission papers of Captain James Lindley, who was a Tory captain, who was the leader of the attack on Fort Lindley. He attacked his own house. He used to live there. He got kicked out um, by, the, um, by the Patriots. He got captured at the Battle of the Great Cane Break. And Fort Lindley is um, you know, probably 12 miles from here. It's on Fort Lindley Road. It's near uh, the dam at Lake Raven. So um, that's a brief history of the um, story of Fort Lindley. We're going to be looking at artifacts that been, have been recovered uh, recently, and I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. But at this point, I would like to introduce the landowner of Fort Lindley. And uh, this is Renee Richmond, and Renee is a member of the DAR. And uh, Renee and her husband David have owned the property for a couple of years? Since 2011. Okay, okay. <laughs> but uh, they have allowed me to do preservation work at Fort Lindley, and we do tours of Fort Lindley. And uh, we just did one uh, a couple of months ago, I think. I do field trips. And I would love for all of you folks to join me on any of the field trips that we go on. The next field trip is going to be September 21st at Hayes Station. 
Now, Fort Lindley is an extremely important Lawrence County site for Revolutionary War. Hay Station is extremely important as well. Uh, that's the site where Bloody Pill Cunningham um, slaughtered 18 men who had already surrendered and had their hands tied behind their back. That was a gruesome thing. But Hay Station is a sacred place in Lawrence County. Other than the Lawrence County churches, I would say it's the most sacred place in Lawrence County. And it's a spot that should be preserved. But um, along with uh, Ms. Richmond, who's doing such a great job allowing us to do what we do, I mean, she, we appreciate greatly what she's doing. There are two heroes of, of Fort Lenny. One of them was Major Jonathan Downs, um, who was the defender of the fort and fought off the attack. The other hero of Fort Lenny is the guy who rediscovered that fort after being lost for 200 years. And he's sitting right here. This is Roy Christie. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> Roy found this fort in the 70s. If it wasn't for that, we wouldn't know. Now, there's some distinctive features at Fort Lindley. I mean, when you look there, you say, wow, this is a fort. It's on top of the hill. There used to be trenches all the way around the fort, and it was uh, palisaded with uh, wooden stakes. So the trenches were probably 10 feet wide and 6 feet deep. Now, you can still see them to this day. They're about 2 feet wide and 1 foot deep, but still, they're, they're visible clearly defined. And uh, also there's um, uh, piles of rock in certain spots. And you're like, what are these piles of rock doing here? But when you look at it, they're strategically placed for commanding fields of fire. So I think they were elevated shooting platforms. Uh, but, you know, that's just supposition on my part. Um, some, somebody here may have a better interpretation than that. But um, given that little brief bit of history, I'd like at this time for Roy to explain what he found in the 1970s. Roy, will you get up and show them what you've got here? Well, uh, I can see it. this is what I found in a, a hole, what I thought was a, either a magazine pit or it was a hole. And when I found these artifacts, there's a three inch, I call it a handmade three links of chain, a military button, part of a spoon, and these, these uh, buckles here. And using that information, and the, this, Sarah Nash got the uh, state archaeologist to come up and verify that that was the site of Fort Lindley. And, uh, the law I belong to the Lawrence County Historical Society. We try to put a permanent marker up there, but if you ever done with the state that was a state highway commission. <laughs> you you got a job on your hand. <clears throat> and too much permitting and this stuff. But anyway, we had a local artist paint a temporary sign and we had a dedication out there. We had the South Carolina National Guard band come up there. Jack Barter bought his cannon down there and shot it. And we had Mr. Bill Jacobs from Clinton was uh, the president of the association. He made a speech about it, and we had a good time. And several hundred people attended, but later on, thank goodness, we was able to uh, get a permanent marker which shows Fort Lenny on one side and the life of Major Jonathan Down on the other side. Now, Jonathan Down whole place wasn't too far from that. If you go down US 76 toward beautiful downtown Hickory Tavern where I live, <laughs> or you cross Lick Creek, go out there just a little ways and that's the Down Cemetery. He's buried there. There's a monument to him out there. And his house was just up a ways from it. Jonathan Downs was quoted as saying, I shot buffalo from my front porch on the way down to the lake. Salt him. Shot his buffalo from his front porch. The buffalo was in this area back at that time. So. In fact, most farms got started what they called buffalo wallers. These see, uh, cane brakes would grow up real heavy, but the buffalo would get out there and water and knock them all down. 
and out no, no trees to cut you, start plowing and run away. So that's some of the story that uh, I had, but uh, you want me to tell how I found, found the thing? Look, it's the floor is yours, Roy. <laughs> this is a, a, a dog and pony show, I call it. But um, there was a professor of English at the University of South Carolina was printing a quarterly magazine called Names in South Carolina. It had a list, whoever laid Jones, Sam, Johnson, told how that came about. And during, he started putting a little brief story about battles in South Carolina during the Revolutionary War. And one issue, which I still have, showed the Fort Lindy Battle of Fort Lindy had an outline of the state of South Carolina with a dot. I said, that looks like Lawrence County. <laughs> he said, I got the Sarah Nash. Her father was a surveyor of Lawrence County for years and years. And bless my soul, he had an 1883 Kaiser and Helen map of Lawrence County depicted where everybody lived and what available drop in streams, how many feet stream drop where you could put a mill or grind, grind mill or something. And on that thing it had old fort. And I started from that point and found the hole from a metal detector with this. And that's how I found Lindley's Fort. I was getting interested from that magazine. The professor in Columbia wrote names in South Carolina. And uh, Sarah Nash was very instrumental in getting the archaeologists to come up and we met out there. But when I found it, man had a cattle ranch there. All them trees you see out there, no, it wasn't there then. It's just a big open field, which as Durant pointed out, was a field of fire for the fort. It was clear they could have a big field of fire. So, uh, where they could shoot, but now it's grown up pretty heavily out there. But when I saw it, it was a cattle ranch. And that's my dog doing show. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Bill. Anybody have any idea what these items are? I didn't know until Bill just told me. Hi, uh, I'm Bill Thompson. I'm with the Backcountry Diggers. Uh, Durant approached us and uh, wanted us to come do a little research at Port Lindley. Knowing what uh, Roy had found there, a uh, group of us got together and brought our metal detectors. We found some stuff which we're going to display later. Um, when I came, I had never seen any of these artifacts, and this was in the case, and I was like, holy crap, that's, that's a flint and steel. And Duran's like, what do you mean? This was a device used to make fire. It you would hold it in your hand like this with a piece of tar cloth or burnt uh, material, and you would actually strike it. And you should see a sparkle, and that would actually ignite. <coughs> that's the first time cloth. we've done this. This is unplanned. <laughs> It would ignite a piece of char cloth and that would be transferred into a tinder bundle which would uh, blow and continuous light air would cause it to ignite. So what Roy actually found here is something from probably the Port Lindley area era uh, for a device for making fire. So I had never seen this before and I was intrigued about seeing all the stuff. When we went out and uh, did our little excursion at Fort Lindley, Roy joined us and he explained to us some of the things that he found, but I had never seen them. Uh, we heard that they were here and we were excited about coming down here to get a first-hand view of, you know, some of these artifacts that were found back in 1970. And they're actually pretty amazing. So, Well, this, this flint, it's not from around here, it was imported from somewhere. Um, but flint was something that was used quite a bit in Revolutionary War times. You can see, you've heard of flint knives. <coughs> Native Americans used flint knives. You can see how sharp the edge is on this. So that would be one of the uses. But also in all of the muskets and rifles that they had, they had you know flint that would uh, be struck by the hammer of the um, rifle and create a spark and ignite the powder, which would ignite the charge, which would, you know, shoot the bullets. So, um, flint was an important thing back then. And this was highly traded among the uh, our Native Americans for hundreds of years. Uh, they had quite an extensive uh, 
uh, commercial trade system going on. Well, at this time, um, I want to show what the backcountry diggers found at Fort Lindley, and I would like to introduce this fine group of gentlemen over here, and with Bill as well. <laughs> So uh, we have uh, these fellas to thank for what we're getting ready to see today. And um, let's come on up and take a look and I'll show you, show you what we've got here. I know you can't see it from where you're sitting. <laughs> and I want feedback from you. This is a, a show and tell day. Actually, we're now, if, if you're... You can't talk during this. We can't have, I don't want to have to be yelling. Uh, let's come around and look, but let's only have one conversation going at a time. Only one conversation at a time. One conversation at a time. That would be hard to play. That's probably impossible. I believe so. I'm not, I'm not a professional. That's a part of the second one of these. Exactly. You see what we got here? This is a lock. This is an iron um, lock. That's the back plate. Now, this is from a separate lock. It's sort. It shows the internal workings. You can see these two items here are repeated there. So there was a pin that went through there. So. This was from two different locks. Uh, these are different pieces of that. Check this out. That is a toe or heel protector. Durant, Durant, that's going to be probably 1800s right there. Yes, this, yeah, we don't know the dates on that. I mean, this, this is not authenticated. Uh, could very well be. This is just a random piece of brass. Most of the have a date. What that may be. And here's a uh, buckle from a harness or a uh, belt. And we have uh, 27 nails. Okay? Square nails. Now, I was surprised that any nails were found, and these nails may be post-Revolutionary War. One thing that really has struck me, um, when George Washington was writing his letters from the battlefields, he wrote quite a few to Martha Washington, who burned all his letters at the end of the war. We have no record of, of those letters. However, we do have the letters that George Washington wrote to his cousin, who was his overseer at his Mount Vernon plantation. And the night before the Battle of Brooklyn, when um, uh, Washington was about to get whooped pretty good, he's writing to his cousin, his overseer, and says, I hope that you will scour the countries, the counties of Southwest Virginia looking for nails. I want to get the um, siding up on my west wing of Mount Vernon before the cold weather sets in. So that's how concerned he is the night before the battle. He's looking for nails. He's sending his all over the counties of Southern Virginia. <coughs> nails were rare. Uh, many of these nails have what's referred to as a rose head, and that's supposed to be older. There's one in here that's got a square head. This is it. And this is obviously a newer nail. But again, I don't know if these are Revolutionary War era or not. But I think they are. Actually, Tom found that one. Oh, wow. It's a brass button with a pewter stem, we think. Is it just plain? There's nothing on it. Uh, there's possibility that there's a um, checkerboard pattern on there. It's a cuff button. Yes, it's a cuff button. Okay. I know I can have this. Yeah. Check that little thing out. So that's lead. Okay. This is lead. So this would have been something, and it started out maybe this long. It's a stylus. It's something that you would write with. 
So this is a writing utensil right here, and it's lead. Lead, after a hundred years, gets that white patina. That's what Mike told me. So that's an interesting little learning there. I have no idea how old this is. Oh, that's a potter? Yeah. Now, this is what's referred to as tamp lead. In the making of bullets, and if there were, um, you know, excess left over, this is what you would have. And this would be discarded in the ground, even though that's uh, big enough to where I would think you can make another bullet out of that. Yeah, yeah. So this is one of the most interesting pieces of all. Who knows what this is? I do, I'm, I'm not positive. I'm pretty positive, but I'm not absolutely positive. I believe it is. It's a what? What is that? It's a, it's a musket ball that's been fired and whacked into uh, um, something solid, a rock or a log or a bone. Very good, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's a very distinct item here. But I saved the best for last. These are my favorite right here. This is buckshot. Buckshot. Now, one thing about Revolutionary War muskets. There were two types of um, rifles used, guns used, long guns. Uh, one was musket. Probably it was all rifles used at uh, Fort Linden because these were guys that were using their hunting rifles to, to hunt with. But um, a musket firing a musket ball, it was only accurate to about 75 yards, and it wasn't that accurate at that time. So um, what you could do to improve the um, uh, accuracy or effectiveness of a musket would, would be to load buckshot in there with your musket ball. And that was called buck and ball. So you would have seen these items together. Um, Thomas Sumter got wounded with five of those buckshot and he was out of the war for like six months. I mean, you would if you put three or four buckshot in with your uh, musket ball, and they're all whizzing around this way and that way, but you increase your um, uh, rate of fire four and five fold. And if you got shot with one of those things, you'd be out of action for a while. Uh, that'd be pretty good. So these are the different things that we failed at. Uh, Fort Lindley and there's more to find. You got us together three years ago. You know, there was some kind of task of trying to locate the ship. And it's just now, it's all about what you guys are putting us on some really amazing historic sites. Honestly, that was the plan from the beginning to locate the mill and see if we could draw enough attention and enough trust to be able to find the work for the poor community. So here we are. Here we are. Yeah, exactly. We succeeded. Here we are. Well guys, I don't know what the video is going to turn out like. Uh, we have, we had a big truck, we had a lot of people around, milling around. Uh, you know, I personally had, I, I stopped to talk to a whole lot of people in there. I didn't do too much of the video, so hopefully things turn out. Uh, needless to say, this was a big deal for us. And we were very honored and, and, and uh, proud to be able to be a part of it. I hope you enjoy the video. Until next time, we'll catch you later. Bye.